Hi, welcome. I'm Bonnie Lynn Linke, your independent stamping up demonstrator and welcome to my very first live. I'm excited about this. I didn't advertise that I was going to do one in case I chickened out. So if by some chance you are catching this live um, on YouTube or Facebook, please just drop a comment and say hi and let me know you're out there. Um, and if you don't want to do that, that's fine too. That's okay. I was a little bit nervous about doing this today. Um, my sister said, oh, just treat it like you're doing any old recording because I do record videos. And I said, and I thought to myself, oh man, do you know how many times I have to restart them because I can't get my name out straight and that I'm an independent stamping up demonstrator, but I did it today. So, okay, I am gonna do a card with the Thoughtful Expression stamp set, the bundle and the Poetic Expression designer series paper. But before I do that, I just want to remind you of a couple things. Um, my free kit for this month, if you place a $50 order in my online store using my host code, which is on my website, bonniestamps.com, um, you will receive the painted lavender kit from me free. I will mail it to you. I cut out everything, the cardstock, um, any cutouts there are to be cropped. I cut the designer series paper, everything for you, give you the embellishments and um, mail it to you. And then I do send you um, a tutorial also. I email that to you. So that is my thank you gift to you when you shop with me during the month of March. And remember to use the host code, which is on my website, bonniestamps.com. Also, on Thursday, I am going to have a new class that um, will be posted. Now, this goes out through my emails. Um, and if you visit my website, you can sign up for my emails. And the class I'm going to be doing is the Latte Love. There is this sampler right here that is part of the class. And um, the frame is not included. The stamp sets are not included either. Um, let's see. And then there will be five cards that I designed for the class. And um, let me show those to you real quick. Here's three of the cards right here that I designed. There's two more. Plus, I also give you a um, card that I posted on my blog last month. I think it was last month. And um, I give you the supplies to make that too. The class is $48. You receive well over... Um, 30 to $35 in merchandise um, for the, you get a pack of designer series paper, you get ribbon, you get embellishments, you get um, all the cardstock cut embossed um, for you. You do cut your own designer series paper and there's always a little goodie in there also. And if shipping is an additional $10 on top of the 48 if you live out of the area, or you can come by my house and pick it up if you live in the area. And also you can order the stamp set, which I believe is $46.75, and only people that live in the United States can buy the kit and the um, stamp set from me. Otherwise you just buy the tutorial, which will be also available in the email to buy. And um, and I don't charge you the shipping and the stamping on the um, stamp set. I do put in my PayPal fee though. So the $46.75, there will be an additional um, couple dollars maybe added to that to cover the PayPal fees that I pay for the credit card transaction. I cover the shipping and the taxes from Stampin' Up. So that is a savings to you, a 17% savings at least. Um, at least in Idaho, because our tax here, sales tax is 6%. So, okay. And let's see. I believe, don't forget about the online exclusive, which is the Latte Lab stamp set, the bundle. It is great. And also um, the Simply Zinnia. And I will be loading a tutorial for that. I just um, offered a class on that. And I will be loading that tutorial in my store on my website where you can buy tutorials in case you want that. And that is six cards. Plus I also have attached to it to print out the, um, from the PDF, um, the card that was on my blog also. So, okay. So let's, um, let me move these cards out of the way. 
and we'll go on and switch cameras. So this is the card we're going to make today. And let's see, you can't, let me say something. The sun is starting to come in through that window and you can't really see the designer series paper that good. So there you go. Um, this is the poetic expression and it is the bubble bath color. And that's what the card stock is. So let me get that going. And the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the stamp set here. And I have everything right here that we need to make the card. We're gonna go ahead and stamp the hummingbird first. And the reason why I wanna do that is because I wanna give the ink a little bit of time to dry. When you are gonna color a picture with your alcohol blends, the Stampin' Blends, um, Copics, whatever set of um, alcohol inks you like to use. You should really use Memento Black ink to do it in. Um, I am being bad. I am gonna use my Parakeet Party to stamp this bird in because I just like the look of, looks of it and so let's see, we are gonna go ahead and stamp that right here. So this is Parakeet Party. So I wanna, our Pretty Peacock, I'm sorry. I don't know what I was thinking. Pretty Peacock is what I just stamped that in. And I wanna give that a couple minutes to dry before um, I color it with blend. So we're gonna go ahead now, I'm gonna grab my cardstock grab my tools I'll put them down over here so I don't have to keep reaching across I this is eight and a half by five and a half I scored it at four and a quarter inches and now I am gonna fold it in half on that score line and just burnish with my bone folder there we go and so there is that and next we're gonna take our designer series paper which is four four and a quarter by five and a half. And we're just gonna attach that to the card front. And so. I hope you are all having good weather. We um, actually did, it was a nice day. The wind didn't blow as hard today. We had a lot of wind over the weekend and that was no fun. Okay, so and I'm just going to put this over here. We're actually supposed to get sunshine starting Thursday with temps in the high 50s and I think maybe even into the 60s. I am so ready for that. Okay, so I just attached that to there. Okay, I don't know about you guys, but... Um, let me see. I really don't like the lighting right now. Let's see. That's a little bit better so that you can see better. There we go. Okay. If you get glue on you, I'm messy with glue. I always put my fingers in it. I like having alcohol wipes handy because it will just take the glue right off and I don't have to worry about it being sticky. Okay. So we did that. Next, we want to emboss a piece of four by five and a quarter white cardstock with the layered florals embossing folder. So we're gonna put this in here like so. Oh wait, this, take that back. This is a landscape card. So we wanna lay it landscape. Now when I'm gonna step over to my embossing machine real quick and I'm going to emboss this, but Two things, remember not to put it all the way up where it hits the top, because then you have a blank space where it doesn't get embossed. And make sure you know what is gonna be seen, that you know where you're gonna cover up the embossing. So make sure you get what you want on your piece that's gonna be showing, because this is gonna be covered by, um, oh, the pink cardstock. So we're gonna, I want be able to see that or else I can turn it this way. Oh, I like this way more. So I'm just gonna move it around 
so that I can get what I want on there. Okay, now when I put this in my machine, I'm not going to put it in where this folded part is going in first. I think that's harder to get it going. And there's no room on our cut and emboss machines or any of our machines to be able to turn this a little bit so it goes in at an angle. So I'm going to turn it where this open flap goes first because I think it's easier to um, get in to get it go through the machine. There we go. All right. And there we go. So I like that. And I'm going to take some glue. And here's my little glue holder. It's just a piece of two by four with a hole drilled in the middle that's perfect for the cap of the green glue. So just along the edges there. Trying to see what I'm doing. Okay, now let's get the side, the folds up at the top going the right way. So let's put it on this way. I don't know how many times when I first started making cards, I used to um, not pay attention that I had the card laying properly. And I put my picture, I'd end up putting my picture upside down because I wasn't paying attention to where the opening of the card was. After doing that a few times, you um, remember to start looking for that. Okay, and while we're still waiting on that other to dry, let's go ahead, and I forgot to grab an envelope, so let's go on and get our envelope taken care of. We are going to put a piece of designer series paper on it, the same one that's on the front of our card. So I just take and I put some glue along the edges of my flap, just like so. And you see where I accidentally hit that glue and it went to the other side there? I don't know if you saw that or not. If that's the case and it's sticky, the stamp will go there, so that should cover it up. But if not, take your embossing buddy and just pounce it on it and it will take the stickiness away. Okay, and I'm gonna let that dry before I cut it off. So we'll um, set that aside. Okay, let's come back to our bird now. I got glue on me again, so I'm just wiping my fingers. Okay, we're gonna take our petal pink lens. And I'm gonna take the dark one right at the bottom under the eye there. And then I'm going to just take and just put a couple little oh, flicks on his wing. Then I'm going to take my light petal pink and I'm just going to, I'm going to put a little bit under that wing right there. Actually, I should put dark right there because that would be a darker area because you have the wing coming down. And if I had gray handy, I would maybe put some gray in there, like a light smoky slate or something to um, give it a little bit more shading. I'm just going to put a little bit on his belly. I'm not going to color the whole thing, a little bit up there. And I'm gonna, I am going to color the tips of the wings. There we go. You don't always have to feel like you got to color everything. You can leave some white. It doesn't hurt anything. There we go. I like that. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to get our Thoughtful Expression die. I use the magnetic boards from Stampin' Storage to put my dies on. And... These dies take up a lot of space, but if they don't take up too much space, get the magnetic boards that will fit inside my stamp cases. This one doesn't have it, but, um, and I tape them in there and that way my dies are with my stamps. I love that for my organization. That is a wonderful tip. 
So let's see, I need my cut and emboss machine, which I think, my mini one. I like this little machine. Okay, I'm gonna turn this over this way. Okay, now I normally tape these in place, but I don't have any tape on any of my machines right now. So I'm just gonna set it down. Now, if you have trouble with your machine getting the um, plates to go, start moving, I offset mine. And you'll see that as it comes out here. See, none of them are lined up between the three plates. None of them are lined up evenly. And that makes it easier for it to go through. All right. Let's see. And there's our bird. See how nice that cuts it out? Now, we're not going to go too far with the cut and emboss machine because we are going to need it again. So I need to put it someplace where I can remember where I put it. Put it right down here on the floor because otherwise I'll forget. Okay. So next, what we're going to do, I took my two and three eighths inch, inch punch and I um, punched it out, a piece of the car vellum cardstock. And I took right here, I believe I took, what was it, my second largest die? Yes. And the second largest of these dies right here. And I cut out a piece of bubble bath cardstock and that gave me that okay so we're gonna put the bird on here and being I haven't attached anything let's see where's my blue dots oh, I thought they were up on my desk they're not I don't see them any place okay we'll just that's an easy solution I'll just grab a new one I don't even have a take your pick tool right here so we're gonna Use this old one here. I'm all set up for a class tomorrow, and I had a class Saturday. I kind of left everything set up. So a lot of my tools and everything are out in the other room. There we go. So I just put one glue dot, and I'm putting it right in the middle. Now, I am going to want another glue dot to help keep this secure. But I need to see... My bird is going to go on like so. So I want to make sure that my glue dot or whatever adhesive I use is going to be covered by the bird. There we go. Just straight down. And as you see, or maybe you don't see, um, I put a glue dot right in the center and then I put one about an inch below. And remember, when you put this on your card, you'll just turn it so that it's going to, matter of fact, why don't we attach the bird now with some dimensionals, and then that way when I put it on my card, I can get it positioned correctly. Here we go. I'm going to use three dimensionals. Okay, now the important thing is, is that I cover up my adhesive so you can't see it through the paper. Okay, now I'm going to use dimensionals again along on the back side of my cardstock. And people tell me I use a lot of dimensionals, and that is true. I like to. My feeling is when I mail it, I don't want it to go flat. So I'm actually going to add a couple more. There we go. Actually, I'm using a lot here. <laughs> okay. I know it's overkill, but this way, you know, it will arrive where it's going in good shape. It won't be all flattened and everything. Okay. 
There we go. I'm going to get my card front. And I want to put it just about like so. That looks good. I'm going to leave enough room for the greeting. Okay. Now we are going to get a stamp out of here, the Enjoy Your Day stamp, which is right here. And we are going to put this on the block. Okay, B and Zs are the red rubber stamps, also known as the cling stamp set. We don't need to use the stamp and pierce pad when we stamp. You're better off not to use this um, piercing mat when you're using these because otherwise you got too much cushion and it's easier to rock your um, stamps. So, okay, I'm going to move that aside. Okay, and when you ink up your stamp, just, you know, tap it a few times. Try to keep it straight without rocking it. And remember, if you do rock it, you can turn it over and um, stamp the other side. But to me, that looks good. So I'm going to keep that like that. And what we're going to do, I'm going to take the stamp off. And while we got the ink pad open and we're stamping, let's go ahead. Remember, this is a landscape card. Let's um, stamp our happy birthday in there. I'm using the go-to greetings for my happy birthday. And I love that stamp. So we are going to use the biggest happy birthday, which is right here. And let's see, I got a piece of DSP that's going to go on the side there. We'll get that on in a minute. And we are going to put this up. I just want it sitting right there so I can kind of center this on the rest of the page. And hopefully get it straight. Looks good enough for me. Perfect. All right. So we'll finish that in a second. We'll close up the ink pad. We'll get that cut and emboss machine back up here. The mini one. There's enough room where I can set that on here. Unlike my big one. Because I try to keep this on Zoom for you so that you can see a little bit better. Okay. This is the stylish shapes, and we're going to take the long skinny chevron to cut out our greeting. Offset that a little bit. Yeah, we don't want to cut off the J or the Y on that one, so we'll bring that down a little bit and hope that I don't move it when I put this on. I think we got it. All right. My husband was doing um, some embossing with the embossing folders for a class for me recently. And he said, man, you get a workout doing this. You need an electric machine. So stamping up, we need an electric machine. Um, <laughs> he does all my die cutting for my classes. And he does a great job. But this was the first time I had to ask him to do the embossing folder. And my husband is sick with cancer. So, um, you know, his strength isn't what it once was. And it's, it's, he's a sweetheart to do it for me. He really is. I appreciate it. And, it. and he feels like he's being very useful in helping me. And he is. Okay. And I'm trying to get some glue on this out putting it on my fingers. It's always when I turn it over that I get it on my fingers. See? Okay, and we're just gonna glue that right there like so. Now I like the inside of my cards to be dressy. And um, so I'm gonna show you how I do that in a moment, but we need to finish the front of the card. We need to go ahead and put this on. So we need more dimensionals. Uh, 
Okay, when you use your dimensionals, do you like taking them like in a straight line across or do you just take them from anywhere starting in the middle and just do them? I like starting mine and this one I didn't do it with because there's no even line going at a diagonal. I like to start mine in the corner and then just work my way up. A little bit weird. Okay. Okay, let me see. And I should not have put this dimensional on right here because this is going to go on my cardstock. That should have been a glue dot right there. So let me get this off. See what happens when you talk and um, don't pay attention to what you're doing. So, all right, let me see. Okay, and then I need to make sure that other dimensional goes on there. I think one dimensional at the one end would have been fine. And then just a glue dot right up there. And there you go like that. And now we need some embellishments. Okay. Now my embellishments were up here a few minutes ago. Everything was up here a few minutes ago. It's amazing how things can walk off or get hidden. These are the Petal Pink and Pretty Peacock Foil Gems. They are in the spring mini catalog, which is good through the end of April. And um, that's where the thoughtful expressions and the po poetic expression um, stamps um, items were too. When I first looked at the mini catalog, I was like, oh, um, I don't know. And I didn't order much. And then I got to looking at it and seeing some of the stuff people was making. And I thought, oh, I really do like this. I think I will. <laughs> and I started ordering more. So dangerous. And then I look for the little flowers. Like there was a little flower right there. And there's another little flower right here. And I'm just putting an embellishment in those. And of course, I can't have an even number of embellishments on it. So I think I'm going to take one more. Oh, and there's another little flower that I can kind of put that on right there. So Nah, I don't like that one there. I think I will place that one right about here instead. Okay. So we have our embellishments on. So now we need to finish the inside of the card. And we've already stamped it. We've already put our designer series paper on. Now I have a piece of pink cardstock. We could have stamped just happy birthday right here. You can write your message. And that's fine. It, it's beautiful. And you have lots of room to write on. Or you could even cut a piece of designer series paper if you want to and put it along this edge or down along the bottom or stamp the hummingbird in here. Whatever you do is fine. But I like color. And, um, and I like it to look, to me, it looks more complete. If I would even just take this and put it down, the, to me, that's more of a finished look. It's my own personal preference. We all have our own things. It just um, depends on what you like to do. This makes mine a little bit heavier to, um, when milling, but it's still in the one ounce, under one ounce. But I like to just, I don't know, just give it another look. Now I could have also cut my um this piece of pink cardstock right here that you see right here i could have cut that from the middle of this and nobody would have ever known because it would have been covered by the white cardstock as long as the white cardstock on top is going to cover it or whatever color cardstock you put you can cut something out of the middle of this so you don't feel like you're wasting a piece of paper because we all know the price adds up. So we are going to just put that in here. But I just like this look. So, and if you'll leave me a comment on um, how you do yours, I appreciate it. Hello, Marie. Thank you for joining me today. I appreciate it. And hi, Judy. Haven't seen you for a long time. Glad to have you joining me, that you found me. And if you get a little bit of glue on the inside, just take an eraser. I buy these um, 
online from Amazon. They're a high polymer eraser and it's by Pentel. And I just erase where I got the glue and go over it and you won't see it. Okay, and now for our envelope, the only thing we got left to do is um, cut it. Now, depending on where you get your envelope, you need to measure your flap. You can figure your designer series paper, if you're using the A2 envelopes, you can figure you need a width of six inches, but the depth can vary from just right under two inches up to two and a half inches. So measure it and then cut your paper accordingly. And I find that gluing it is the easiest way to get it on where it stays. Now I got a little bit hanging over here. I don't worry about that. I'll have as much as an eighth of an inch sometimes depending on how I cut it hanging over. And that's fine because a lot of flaps are longer than this one. So there we go. We just made the card right here. Isn't it pretty? And then we have this one right here too, which I did as my sample. And we got another envelope here also. So there. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you liked it. And I hope I didn't do too bad of a job for doing live. I plan on going live every Monday evening about six o'clock. And I hope you'll join me. And um, you can find me on YouTube. You can find me on Facebook or my Facebook page, which is Bonnie Stamps or Bonnie Lynn Linky. And I'm on Instagram and um, sign up for my emails. I'm always offering specials and I have online classes. And um, thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate all your support. And um, I wish you a blessed week. And thank you so much. Bye.